All right, so here is a quick video about how to uh, minimize the lag from Thinkorswim and while you're trading. A lot of the times the lag is originated from the TD Ameritrade servers, but sometimes uh, the lag can be from your end as well. So this video is aimed towards uh, covering all your bases and to minimize the causes on your end that could <clears throat> cause lag when you're trying to trade on Thinkorswim. So first things first is the obviously the Thinkorswim settings. So if you open up Thinkorswim, Uh, you can go to the uh, gear icon and switch up the memory usage. So I have a 16 gigabyte RAM computer and I have mine set to 2048 minimum. And then my maximum, I actually type it in 8192. I was reading somewhere from a uh, TD Ameritrade representative saying that Thinkorswim runs smoothest on ratios uh, with the min and max of one to two or from one to four, one to four. So I did uh, the one to four ratio. So my minimum is 2048. And then my maximum I typed in, I had to type this one in 8192. And that seems to be working fine for me. Uh, very smooth. Uh, and yeah, I have enough, I have enough RAM to run TOS. And then also to be running other programs like uh, my my internet browser and OBS. So OBS I use for my uh, recording software. And so if I'm having all those things opened as well as TOS, it seems to be working fine. And my task manager only maxes out at about 40 to 50% with all of those things running. So uh, it seems to be working fine uh, on my end. And if you go into your task manager, um, here you can see obviously all of your processes running. I don't have TOS open, uh, so but that's usually around 15%, 15 to 20% for me. It kind of fluctuates up and down around 15% on average. And so that puts me up near 40%. <clears throat> uh, the other thing that I usually run with my TOS is, is Streamlabs OBS, in which I will show you the settings that I have to minimize CPU usage on that, uh, but that will be later in this video. Um, but first let's go into startup. So when you start up your computer, these are going to be the programs that you're going to be, that are going to be <clears throat> automatically, uh, running in the background. And so I have most of these disabled <clears throat> because I don't really use them or I don't need them to be opening when I start up my computer or running in the background, uh, when I start my computer. So I disabled all of them except my Realtek HD audio universal, uh, microphone, which is the mic that I'm using right now, and I use that all the time. So uh, the startup impact is low for that, so there's no really reason for me to disable that because I use it all the time and the startup impact is low. But some of these are going to be high startup impact, and that can eat up some of your CPU usage. And if you're having high CPU usage when you're using Thinkorswim, <clears throat> um, that could be one of the reasons why you're, why you're seeing more lag than usual. Uh, so the idea is to kind of minimize that as possible, but without, um, um, without not allocating enough resources to think or swim. So that's why I have my, my memory settings at 2000 to 8,000, but, uh, they can go through, um, yeah, my memory settings and there's a CPU. Uh, the next would be your. Uh, your internet, so it could be internet could be a contributing factor towards thinkorswim lag. However, most of the lag is going to be sourced from the, the TD Ameritrade servers and on their end, uh, just because they don't have direct access routing, they have smart routing, and it takes time for our information to be sent towards the TD uh, servers to then be sent towards uh, a route. Uh, to the markets to get filled and to sell your orders. So to buy and sell your orders. So uh, that is going to be most of the reason why you're going to be seeing lag in TD Ameritrade, especially when there's higher than normal volume in 2020 and 2021, we've seen higher than normal volume. 
uh, in those past years, and that's why there's just so much lag. It doesn't matter how fast your computer was. It was the actual TD Ameritrade servers that were just getting so slow because of the amount of people that were trading and the amount of shares that were being traded through the platform, and it didn't have direct access routing. It had smart routing, so it had to send our order from... The, our computer towards the TD servers, and then from there it'll be sent towards uh, the, their route of NASDAQ or EDGX or um, Amex, uh, whatever route they use, <clears throat> which is uh, best for them. And so that's why it takes a little bit longer for those fills, and sometimes it can get laggy if there's a lot of traders on or lots of volume going through. So that, uh, but obviously. You want to make sure you can cover all your bases. So one of the bases is going to be your Wi-Fi or your internet. So before I did have Wi-Fi and now I just recently transitioned to Ethernet and Ethernet in uh, a few of my studies of just testing my internet uh, with like my downloading speed and my ping with internet Wi-Fi versus Ethernet internet. Um, my study showed that my Wi-Fi actually had 33% less download speed than my Ethernet, uh, using Ethernet. And then also with ping, my ping on Ethernet was one with uh, a standard deviation of one. So jitter is your standard deviation or your variation in, uh, in ping. And so I had both on Ethernet. I had both one ping and one jitter, which is one variation. And then also... <clears throat> Uh, my Wi-Fi, when I was using Wi-Fi, I would have a 8 ping, but then my ping would fluctuate so much from 8 ping down to, to up to 30 ping to down to 15 ping. It was just kind of fluctuating up and down so much, which could also have contributed to having some sort of lag or discrepancy in thinkorswim. Because I remember sometimes like the, I would fill my order and... The person I'm watching on a stream, their order would be fine. It would just it would go in smoothly, but mine would take a little extra longer than normal, or I would just randomly disconnect from the server on TOS, and I would have to like either restart the program or I'd have to wait for it to reconnect, and that's just all from the discrepancy or the latency in that Wi-Fi connection versus the Ethernet. So I switched to Ethernet and I'm having way better ping. So yeah, virtually no uh, lag in my ping. And then also my download speed is actually increased by 33% as well. And so uh, if you do move to Ethernet, some things that you're going to need to get is a USB to USB adapter. If you don't have an Ethernet in your laptop, um, so USB to USB adapter, which I'm going to type this on, uh, Amazon right now. You can just so you can get a look. Um, so it's going to look like USB to USB adapter multi-port. Yeah, it's going to be something like this. So the USB is going to plug into your computer. You can also get a USB-C version, but I just got the regular USB 3 uh, port. So that plugs into my computer and then creates an four more ports. And then that from there, you can, um, uh, you can put in the Ethernet USB to Ethernet port or adapter, sorry. And then from there, you can um, plug in this device, which I got. This is the exact one that I got. So the USB-C, uh, sorry, USB-3 plug goes into this adapter. And then from the Ethernet, this is where you plug in your Ethernet cord. And you're going to want to get a Cat8 Ethernet cord. Those are the best on the market. Those are the fastest and most reliable on the market. So if you can get a Cat8 uh, Ethernet cord <clears throat> to plug into there, and then on this end, a USB 3 is going to plug into this port, and then this plug is going to plug into your computer, and that's all if you don't have that Ethernet plug into your laptop, which most laptops don't, and so, that, so that's what you're going to need to have. And it's all relatively cheap. This is 10 bucks. This is 10 bucks, about 12 bucks. 
and the Ethernet cord is going to be about 10 bucks as well. So very small investment to potentially uh, drastically improve your trading experience and having smooth uh, trading experience in your Thinkorswim. And so that is that. The next thing you're going to want to do is delete. All right, you're going to want to go into your folders here and then click on this PC. And then you're going to search this PC and you're going to type in uh, user GUI. And that's going to search for user GUI. And your user GUI is just pretty much all of the files that TOS downloads. Uh, you know when you open up TOS, it says installing updates. So all of those updates are going to be stored on this user GUI folder. And if you haven't deleted this and reinstalled this in a while, uh, this could contribute to kind of <clears throat> a little bit of uh, lag in Thinkorswim as well. Because uh, you want to update and delete the, the files that you aren't using and then uh, being updated with the files that you are using. So <clears throat> I already did this today, so I'm not going to do it again, but I'm going to type this in. So just type in user GUI. All right, now that it's done, so here is the user GUI folder. So pretty much you're just going to drag this and drop it right into the, the trash can. And, and then once you open up Thinkorswim again, it's just going to download it automatically. And so that's pretty much just going to reset those files uh, delete the ones that you're not using, and then it's going to update the ones that are needed to keep Thinkorswim running smoothly. And so that could be helpful as well. Another thing is going to be cleaning up your memory in your computer itself. So going in, into the storage and then deleting stuff that you're no longer using. So like applications that you're not using. Games take up a crap ton of memory. So if you're not playing any sort of games, but you have them downloaded on your computer, uh, that's going to take up a lot of memory, so I would delete those to minimize the amount of memory that your computer is using. Uh, and then also, you know, obviously files or videos that you don't need uh, to store other videos. What you can do is put it in a uh, external hard drive. You can put, uh, I don't know, I think you can put games in an external hard drive. I'm not quite sure on that. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, you can store your files, um, any big files on an external hard drive. Or if there's videos that you want to save... Uh, but you want to delete to kind of free up memory on your computer, you can upload them to like make a YouTube channel and then just keep the videos on private or unlisted on that YouTube channel and then just have like a place to kind of store your videos uh, as private and unlisted, which will help a lot uh, with freeing up space on your computer. And then you can obviously access that wherever because it's online. Um, so that is that. And finally... I'm going to go through the uh, settings that I have set on my OBS. So here you can see my CPU usage, and it fluctuates a lot. So there you saw it at 20%. Now it's it's usually fluctuate, fluctuating around 12%, um, sometimes down to 10% or 7%. And that's because I changed a couple settings that I have on this. Uh, usually if I'm recording in 1080p, this thing is ripping at about 25, 30% CPU, which is a little bit too much. And it kind of puts a little strain on my computer. And I don't like when my fan is blowing 24 seven, cause I feel like it's taking up too much. It's using too much uh, power. And so I kind of want to minimize Streamlabs uh, OBS as much as possible. Cause then it can allocate as much as, as much uh, processing power towards Thinkorswim. And so what I did is you just go into your, sorry, here, go into your settings down here in this bottom left-hand corner, and you're going to go to video. And so when you're recording, uh, this is going to be where you're going to change your resolution. So I moved it down from 1080p to 720p. I barely see a difference uh, in 720p versus 1080p. So um, I moved it down to 720p uh, to kind of save some processing power and not use so much when I'm recording while I'm trading. And it's very, you know, I can still see everything clearly in 720p and so, but I wouldn't go anything lower than 720. Um, but yeah, 720, that's what I moved it to, to kind of save some processing power. And then also if you go to, uh, yeah, so recording, you're gonna go to your encoder. 
So I can't view this because I'm, I'm recording right now, but uh, in your encoder, it's gonna have uh, different encoders. There's gonna be one that says like your hardware one, which is my hardware one is QSV. And then I have my um, software uh, in the software encoder with OBS, which is like 260, X264 or X268, one of those, I forget what it's called. Um, OBS X, yeah, X264. And that one is the one that's built into the software, but it uses, instead of the, my hardware on the computer, which is gonna be my GPU, it's actually gonna use my CPU um, to encode the videos through the software on OBS. And so instead of using the encoder on my CPU, I moved it to the hardware for GPU. So it's gonna use the GPU to encode the video and not the CPU. And that obviously brings down the CPU usage tremendously. And so if I was just using 720p and the X264 encoder, I would be hanging around 20 CPU, 20% 20 CPU. But now that I moved it to the GPU, it significantly reduces the percentage of CPU down to, it's on average about 13% and fluctuating down from like 10% to 15%. Um, and so that's the settings that I changed on OBS to kind of minimize the CPU usage there. And then obviously everything is now focused on TOS running smoothly. And so, uh, with what I'm working here, uh, with this computer, I have a 16 gigabyte RAM, 225 SSD. It's very, a budget friendly computer. Uh, it was only about like 1200 bucks. But uh, it runs TOS smoothly, and I'm able to record and have a browser open as well without any sort of uh, interruptions or maxing out my computer processing. Um, so this is a, a really good computer uh, if you're looking for a budget trading computer. It's a Microsoft Surface Laptop 3 for like $1,200 uh, new. Uh, but obviously I'm looking for, I'm looking to upgrade this computer eventually when I start uh, leveling up my trading and I can afford a better computer, but I'm going to want something no less than 32 gigabytes of RAM because I've been finding that if I want to stream, if I want to stream my trading videos and then have, uh, also the browser open and the chat rooms open it's going to take up even more CPU than I'm using now. So that's why I'm sticking with just my recordings. And then obviously when I um, upgrade my computer, I'll have more processing to stream. Also, what you can do is you can not use your computer for browsing the internet while you're trading. Uh, instead, you can just use another computer for looking on the internet, doing your research, or watching a YouTube video, or in your chat room, you can use another device for that, like your phone, or a tablet, or another computer, and that will also take a lot of processing, um, free up some processing power as well. And so, usually, um, if I go into my task manager, with everything running, my TOS, my Streamlabs, uh, OBS, I mean, and uh, my browser, it's usually clocked in around, um, it's usually clocked in between 30 and 40%. So, all right, that's everything. And uh, if you guys enjoyed the video or got some value on it, out of it, please hit the thumbs up button. Also, consider subscribing if you're not yet a subscriber for some more awesome content. And then I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, see you guys. Peace.